force on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. We know that an electric current flowing through a conductor produces a magnetic field. The field so produced exerts a force on a magnet placed in the vicinity of the conductor. The French scientist André Marie Ampere, 1775 to 1836, suggested that the magnet must also exert an equal and opposite force on the current carrying conductor. Let us try to understand this with the help of a simple demonstration using a small aluminium rod and a horseshoe magnet. Here in this activity AB is a 5 cm long aluminium rod suspended horizontally from a stand using two connecting wires. See how the horseshoe magnet is placed around the rod. The magnet has been placed in such a way that the rod lies between the two poles with the magnetic field directed upwards. For this, the north pole of the magnet is placed vertically below, while the south pole is lying vertically above the rod. The aluminium rod is connected in series with a battery, a key and a rheostat. Now observe what happens when current is passed through the aluminium rod from the end B to A. See, the rod is displaced towards the left. This suggests that a force is exerted on the current carrying aluminium rod when it is placed in a magnetic field. What happens when the direction of the current is reversed? Well, when the direction of the current through the conductor is reversed, the direction of force is also reversed. Let us now check the effect on changing the direction of the magnetic field. If we reverse the position of the horseshoe magnet by interchanging the two poles of the magnet, the direction of the force acting on the conductor again gets reversed. This shows that the direction of the force on the conductor depends on both the direction of the current as well as the direction of the magnetic field. By repeating the demonstration, we can observe that displacement of rod is largest when the direction of the current is at right angles to the direction of the magnetic field. We can conclude that except when placed parallel to the magnetic field, a current carrying conductor always experiences a force when placed in a magnetic field. This force on the current carrying conductor in a field is due to the interaction between the magnetic field due to the current carrying conductor and the magnetic field of magnet in which the conductor is placed. Fleming's left hand rule. Professor J. A. Fleming gave a rule that relates the direction of motion of the conductor to the directions of the current and the magnetic field. This rule is famously known as Fleming's left hand rule. See how we demonstrate this rule. If we stretch the thumb, the first finger and the central finger of our left hand such that they are mutually perpendicular to each other and the first finger points in the direction of the magnetic field, second in the direction of the current then the thumb will point in the direction of the motion or the force acting on the conductor. Electric motor, electric generator etc. are some devices which work on this principle. Electromagnetic induction 
we know from the Oersted's experiment that a current produces a magnetic field. Now the question arises, is the reverse also true? Can a magnet produce current? Michael Faraday began to work on this problem in 1825. For six years, he experimented with magnets and coils of wire. The experimental arrangement used by Faraday consisted of a few turns of wire and a sensitive galvanometer. One day he moved a magnet near a copper coil connected to the terminals of a galvanometer coil and observed that a momentary current was produced in the coil. Faraday observed, when the magnet is stationary, there is no deflection in the galvanometer. When the north pole of the magnet is brought towards the coil, a current flows in the coil and the galvanometer shows deflection towards the light. If the motion of the magnet is stopped, the galvanometer shows no deflection. The current in coil flows as long as the magnet is moving. If the north pole of the magnet is moved away from the coil, the current flows in a direction opposite to the previous case and the galvanometer shows deflection towards the left. If instead of the north pole, south pole of the magnet is either brought towards the coil or moved away from the coil, the direction of the induced current changes. When the magnet and the coil are at rest with respect to each other, the total number of magnetic field lines, called magnetic flux, remains constant. So galvanometer shows no deflection. Whenever there is relative motion between the coil and the magnet, the magnet flux linked with the coil changes and galvanometer shows deflection. The current produced in the coil by changing magnetic flux linked with it is called the induced current and the corresponding potential difference is called the induced potential difference or electromotive force. Whenever a conductor is moved inside a magnetic field, the flux linked with it changes and induced currents are set up in it. The phenomenon of producing electric current in a conductor by moving it in a magnetic field is called electromagnetic induction. Let's do an activity in which the moving magnet is replaced by a current carrying coil and the current in the coil is varied. In this figure, the magnet is replaced by coil 1. When current is made to flow in the coil 1, the primary coil, the needle of the galvanometer instantly jumps to one side and just as quickly returns to zero, indicating the momentary current in coil 2, secondary coil. A potential difference is induced in the coil 2 whenever the electric current through the coil 1 changes. The induced current is found to be the highest when the direction of motion of the coil is at right angles to the magnetic field. The direction of induced current can be found using Fleming's right hand rule, also known as the dynamo rule. It states, stretch the thumb, the index finger and the middle finger of the right hand so that they are mutually perpendicular to each other. If the index finger points in the direction of magnetic field and the thumb points towards the direction of motion of conductor, then the middle finger shows the direction of induced current in the conductor. It is very interesting to note that the electric generator which is used for generating electricity works on the principle of electromagnetic induction.